you want to step up your text to video prompt engineering game, this video is for you. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to make it as easy as possible for you to be able to create your vision without being an expert at writing cinematic prompts. I'm going to first go through my Sora prompting guide that I put together to give you some clues as to what kind of words and phrases you'll want to include to get the best results possible. And then I'll walk through a custom GPT that can act as your co-pilot to help you create the best prompts from very minimal inputs. I'm going to make both of these resources available so you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Let's dive right in. All right, so I'm going to jump into this notion that I put together and it has a few different components. One of them is the prompt used in the custom GPT that I'm going to show you in action shortly. The next are some exemplary prompts that I got from going through the Sora webpage. And if you have no idea what I'm saying, if you go on the Sora website and you go on either recent or featured right here, and you scroll down, if there is a visualization or a video of interest, let's say this one, you can actually go and hover over and see the underlying prompt that led to that final output. So in a way, you already have this tip and trick here, which is you have this, right? So theoretically, you can just take this prompt, copy it, go into a brand new ChatGPT session and say, you are a prompt engineer for text to video prompts, take, the following prompt and adapt it for my vision. And then you put the prompt here and you can say, I want it to be for a close up of a cliff scene in a movie, right? So I'm just making that up, but you can see here, it can now be inspired by this prompt to put together our version of it very quickly without you actually needing to be a very good prompt engineer yourself. While you can imitate and duplicate, it's important to also have the foundation if you wanna actually experiment with this for building a commercial, Facebook ad copy, or whatever applications that text to video could be really helpful for your business. So if we go back to the notion and we go back to the main guide here, you'll see at the bottom, I have this list of camera and shot elements. Now, these are wordings and ways of describing different parts of a video that typically someone that is not in the cinematic industry, such as myself, wouldn't be as aware of or as well versed. Just to give an off topic analogy to help bridge the gap here, imagine you are talking about liking cheese, right? And if you're not a cheese connoisseur, you only have so many words that you're familiar with to describe the cheese. It can taste really good, it can taste bad, it can smell good, it can smell bad, but beyond that, you don't have that many words to describe what you're tasting. Whereas someone that is a true cheese connoisseur might say, hey, this tastes very herbaceous, or it has nutty tones or undertones, and all these fancy words to describe things that you might not have the same words to describe. When it comes to doing text to image or text to video, a lot of these words they're not well versed in are very impactful to the end result. So if you can see here, you have different shot types. You have close up shots, you have medium shots, you have wide angle shots, and you can keep going. And one common one that I see a lot on Sora is drone shots or point of view shots where the camera is flying over top an actual scene. So these are the words that maybe don't come to mind if you're not familiar with them, but knowing that they're existing and that they're actually something you can configure is very helpful. And as you go down, you have different things like camera movements, whether it's pan, tilt, dolly, I had no idea what that was until I actually looked it up. And then technical specifications, these are actually super impactful, especially if it's more cinematic or you're going for a commercial you're putting together. Saying something like a 35 milliliter lens, the very camera I'm filming this with is a 35 milliliter lens. Wide angle, anamorphic, bokeh effect. Again, I had to Google that and see what that looks like. All of these are very different and will give you very different end results just by including them in the underlying prompt. If we go to video quality, the most common ones I've seen are cinematic, ultra detailed, and this one, hyper-realistic, shows up a lot in text to image and even more in text to video, especially with close-ups of things like, let's say, animals, where you can see the individual whiskers and the pupils. Using the word hyper-realistic, helps give the prompt a clue they want it to be as real life as possible. And when it comes to lighting, atmosphere, talking about the type of lighting, even if you don't have the words for it naturally, by saying natural lighting, studio lighting, soft, hard, etc. This one was surprising, golden hour. This is kind of the hour before sunset, that very unique type of lighting. All of these can make a difference in how your end result actually turns out. And as there are more things you can actually integrate, 
I'll leave this for you to read as I'll leave this in the Gumroad link in the description below so you can read it at your leisure. Now, one nuance to note is that text to video and text to image experiences are slightly different. With text to image, there is this joke about the pink elephant issue with image generators. Meaning if you say to an image, hey, make sure you don't have a pink elephant in this room when you generate the image, you magically always find that pink elephant. So as an example, if we go to this ChatGPT session that I had, you'll see here I had a prompt that said, generate an image of a floating video camera around a zoo, but make sure not to show a single elephant. And what do you know? You have an elephant. Now I get slightly more aggressive and I say no elephants. And now you still have an elephant. And if anything, the elephant is more pronounced here. If we keep going, now I say absolutely no elephants anywhere, like nowhere. And if you click it, it's not only one elephant, we have three. So this phenomenon is very apparent with text to image models. So one interesting experience is that in Sora, when I gave the exact same experience here, if I go to my videos, you'll see that this prompt for this video is generate this, a video of a floating video camera around a zoo, but make sure not to show a single elephant anywhere. And from what I could see, despite how bizarre this low quality video is, it doesn't show an actual elephant. So when it comes to text to video, it seems like they figured out the negative prompting where you say, don't do this or do not include that much better than a lot of image generators. We now go back to the original Sora and we go to all videos. You'll see here you're always asked to describe your video and you have a few different options here. So if you click on this plus button, you can either upload an image or a video from what I tested so far pretty comprehensively. It's not very effective. So I would just focus on the prompting itself. Obviously with 480p, you can have a very fast video. And if you're not paying for the pro mode version of ChatGPT, this will probably be your friend to not burn all your credits. If you have 720 or 1080, it not only is slower, but at 1080p, you can only generate up to 10 seconds. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And when it comes to 1V, this is pretty much just saying how many variations of your output do you want after you submit the prompt. Now natively in this tool, you also have the storyboard function, which basically has Sora create prompts for you that break up an individual text into multiple sub scenes. In some cases, this is awesome. In other cases, it is way too verbose that it kind of misses the mark and it over engineers on the wrong elements that it made up that were not in your original prompt. The custom GPT, as you would guess, helps you create normal prompts as well as refined storyboard prompts. So let's hop into my other tab now just to check it out. And the way I designed it is instead of me remembering all these words, I've included references to describing such words in the underlying prompt that if you're curious what it looks like, if you go to this notion file and you click on the custom GPT prompt, you'll see exactly how I put together the prompt for the custom GPT. So if you want to take this, adapt it to Gemini or Claude, you can do so at your heart's content. Pop right back and go to write my Sora prompt. Like I said before, I program it to be more of a co-pilot. So instead of just following orders, if you say or describe a certain scene, it might recommend that you create a storyboard instead of an individual prompt, but it should give you both options so you can make that choice yourself. So the first thing it asks for is what are you going for in terms of the scene or the vibe? And then it asks you what is the aspect ratio you're going for? 69, which is usually the standard wide format, one to one, which is kind of like a horizontal reel or 916. And then what's the resolution 480p, 720 or 1080. And I basically wrote in the instructions so it knows that 1080p is five to 10 seconds. So it'll prompt engineer accordingly. 720p is a bit slower. And then 480p, you can kind of go up to 20 seconds as well. If we put something here and say, I want to create a 3D rendering of a new building in the Toronto area that would be super futuristic. Okay. And then I'll say 720 P and then let's do 16 nine. The output will look something like this where you have a single prompt version that you can use or a storyboard prompt version where it tells you, Hey, this is scene one, this is scene two, and this is scene three. And if you don't want to do the scene approach, you can just take this vague prompt and then paste this into Sora and then ask it to do the storyboard and see what Sora itself comes up with for prompts. And you can compare it to see which one is actually better. So you can see here, 
The Toronto skyline is dominated by a futuristic 3D building, design towers above the cityscape. So see here, that's one detail. If you go back, we said skyline. We didn't say necessarily it's above all the cityscape. So it's adding its own details that might be actually really good. But we just want to verify that the prompt it puts together matches your vision that you want to put together. Go back to the original prompt here. You can see the specific wording where it's actually adapting from the prompting guide. So a sweeping cinematic 3D rendering of a super futuristic skyscraper in the heart of Toronto. The building is sleek, yada, yada, yada. And then you'll see that there's glowing LED strips. The scene is set at twilight, so that's lighting. With the skyline visible in the background, lit by a soft golden and blue glow. And then you can see the description of how the scene should be taken. The camera slowly moves upward in a smooth crane shot, showcasing the skyscraper's height and intricate details. So if we take this whole thing and we paste it into Sora. So let's go back here. Now, despite me paying for the eye-watering $200 a month plan, I've already maxed out my credits. So this will take a bit of time to load. So I'll just send this and then I'll let you know when it's done. All right, so it took a few minutes, but you can see here, it's medium quality and we have that glow in the background we spoke about the cinematic 3d rendering so you can see the building is on the 3d side of things and if you go back to our actual prompt it's set at twilight so around sunset so all of that matches pretty much the only thing that's maybe missing is the holographic design we talked about but as an actual scene, it's pretty good, especially considering that I didn't write any of the prompt myself. Of course, you can obviously edit the prompt, change it, you can cut it, you can do what's called remixing, where you can basically add a prompt as feedback and say, how strongly do you want that prompt to adjust the final output? So if I did something like subtle and I said, hey, can you make the sky green for whatever reason? That's subtle enough of a change that I could do it without actually changing the rest of the scene. Whereas if you do strong, then it might actually impact the entire scene if it's way too big of a change. And let's try one more example using a brand new prompt and using the storyboard function and seeing what that might look like if we use our custom GPT. Let's go to here and we'll create another prompt. Let's make another prompt. Let's make a movie scene of a Siberian black and white husky running in a winter wonderland with a woolly mammoth, both showing how happy they are before a storm randomly comes in. So if we click that, we'll get an output like this and we can go down to the storyboard prompt I can take this, go into a new session, describe my video. I can click on storyboard and then we can actually go in the storyboard and replace the underlying prompts with ours. So if I go to this one, I can copy this, paste it here. I can then go back to scene number two, take this, paste it here. And then I will click on this little plus button if I scroll down to reveal one more card and it's smart enough to fit those cards within the same time constraint. Obviously you can change that as you wish, where you can actually change when one starts and one ends, but for now let's keep it simple. And then I will just say 720p as we did before, and then I'll click create. And while this is creating, I'll just show you that at the very bottom of every single one of these outputs, I added this thing that says possible adjustments just to give you inspiration on what are the different things that you could change. So in this case, it says camera movements. It could add a smooth tracking shot to follow the Husky sprint. Lighting could be soft golden sunlight. Atmosphere could be howling wind or blinding snowflakes. So you can see here, wording matters. Back to Sora, our video is now done. If we click on it, you see a Siberian Husky in what seems to be a Siberian Husky woolly mammoth hybrid at the beginning. And now you have a woolly mammoth and a husky that's half woolly mammoth. They got the snow part. They got the running part. They even got the storm part in the background pretty well. But what we need to change in remix is making sure that the husky is a husky 
and that the woolly mammoth is indeed a woolly mammoth. Now we could keep remixing it to get it perfect, but you get the general idea. This is going to be still experimental in nature until they get it perfect from the first get-go, but for now, this is enough to get you started to building the cinematic vision that you have in your mind. Once again, the custom GPT and the Sora prompting guide will both be available to you in the Gumroad link in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, leave a like, sub, and leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.